Hi guys, welcome to Simply Scuba. So in today's video, we're gonna be comparing two high-end regulators. The Scuba Pro S620Ti with the Mark 25 first stage and the Apex XTX200 with the FSR first stage. So these are two quite high-end regulators. They're both kind of designed for the cold water market. They're both sort of cold water regulator. Um, cold water regulators, but you can sort of travel abroad with them. Uh, they've got similar specs, but they differ in some way. So this video is really gonna try and help you make a decision on sort of if you're kind of deciding between the two, kind of which one to go for. So as a general overview, yes, they're both cold water regulators. Uh, kind of what you see is what you get. You get the first stage and a second stage. Uh, you, get, uh, you get a connecting hose, uh, and then all you have to do is just bolt on a, uh, an Octo and an SPG and any low pressure inflator hoses. Um, as far as um, kind of overall, you get pretty much exactly the same thing. The only thing extra that you get in the box with the XGX200 is a replacement um, exhaust tee. So you can actually swap the exhaust tee over on the XTX200 on the second stage. Uh, so if you don't want the sort of large wide exhaust tee, you can go for a more compact one. Uh, whereas on the S620, it's just, uh, just a standard size. Uh, but other than that, you you pretty much get the same thing inside of the box. Okay, so now we're gonna take a look at the hardware. Obviously this doesn't come with any software, so we're just gonna be looking at hardware in this, uh, this episode. So, kind of the aesthetics, how we sort of feel about it. So I'm starting off with the Scuba Pro on this side. So the second stage is a good looking second stage. Uh, this is kind of a combination between a whole bunch of different second stages from, it's got aspects from the A700 and the, uh, the S600 and sort of small ones. Uh, on the outside, purge button, decent sized purge button. Um, it's quite a soft purge button, very uh, sort of easy, but it's got a section of metal inside of that, uh, which gives it quite a, a sort of a firm feel to it. And this is rubberized as well, so that's got a nice feel. Um, you've got metal sort of surrounding that, which gives it a real smart uh, look. The rest of it is technopolymer, it's plastic. Um, but on the inside, the TI of the name, it's got a titanium barrel. Um, so on the inside, it's something that you'll probably never see. But on the inside, you've got um, sort of titanium instead of chrome plated brass or something. And um, titanium is good for, it's a lot lighter. Um, it's corrosion resistant. It doesn't rust or um, sort of gets the usual verdigris that you can get on brass. Um, it's not so great as a thermal um, conductor. It's, uh, it's got quite a bad thermal coefficient. Um, so it doesn't uh, sort of warm up and cool down too, um, too quick. Um, other than that, um, the kind of knobs there, uh, it, it sort of starts off stiff, but that's quite easy to, um, to manipulate. Uh, Venturi, yeah, very easy. They say they've got uh, a two material um, sort of coating going on in here. Uh, sure, it's not a big selling point for me. Um, you typically, you'd set it to dive and then forget about it. Uh, the mouthpiece is quite smart. This is quite a soft mouthpiece. Um, it's not too long. It's not a, a massive mouthpiece, so it's not gonna go all the way back uh, to the back of your jaw. Uh, and it does kind of flare up quite high up, um, but just as comfortable as a uh, sort of traditional mouthpiece. One big selling point for, uh, for me is that this has a, um, uh, a reusable cable tie. So instead of having to sort of clip off a cable tie and then get a fresh one whenever you change over that mouthpiece, you can just reuse the, uh, the existing one. Um, They've done a lot of work on the exhaust tee. This is a rigid exhaust tee, um, which does reduce the work of effort of um, sort of breathing, but most people aren't really gonna sort of notice that. Connecting the two, you've got a rubber hose. Rubber hoses, uh, I'm torn on rubber hoses. I do like them because they're, um, they're quite robust and, uh, and they don't float. But, um, but they are that much uh, sort of heavier, so if you're traveling with it, then yeah, maybe it's um, sort of worth swapping that, um, that hose over. Um, another thing that is worth noting is, uh, is underneath the little hose protector, they don't have traditional nuts on these. They use these really high torque nuts uh, and you need a special um, spanner to, uh, to do those up properly. So that's worth noting um, if you ever, if you're sort of into changing hoses and moving them over, uh, you're gonna have to get a, a special spanner or risk uh, sort of damaging it with a, a pair of pliers if you wanna swap that over. 
Moving over to the first stage, good looking first stage, um, chrome plated brass. Big selling point is the, uh, the swiveling turret for me and five low pressure ports. So you've got this uh, sort of low pressure port that comes straight out. So when I'm diving on twins, I use that port all the time. On a single as well, you can sort of angle that downwards so that your long primary hose uh, can come out of that and uh, sort of go down underneath your shoulder. Two high pressure ports, um, that's more than enough if you've got a, uh, an SPG and a transmitter, it's perfect. Uh, this isn't environmentally sealed in a traditional sense. Normally environmental sealing has a physical barrier that stops uh, contaminants like salt and um, algae, anything in the water actually getting inside of the first stage. This one allows that to get into the first stage, but the actual working parts, the spring and whatnot, they have this uh, x -tis coating, it's a bit like Teflon, it, uh, it reduces the chance of ice and stuff actually sticking to it and building up. So uh, it does work in cold water, but you might have to flush that out a little bit more precisely with a hose um, sort of between dives. Uh, they've got a nice little detail <clears throat> on the um, on the DIN wheel. I've only got the DIN one uh, sort of with me today. Um, it's kind of squared off, which I quite like. It gives you a, a little bit more um, uh, sort of grab on it, and uh, and this grey section is a little bit softer, so it's a bit more tactile to um, to actually screw in or get off uh, your cylinder. So all in all, I do like the uh, the look and the feel of the um, of the SX20 Ti. Uh, there are a few little things that I'm not a huge fan on, but as an overall, it's a smart, good looking regulator. Moving on to the Apex XTX200. So again, very classic style uh, from the XTX range. Um, the the front cover so we've got this metal flash of chrome uh sort of on the front uh two-stage purge button and this is all solids um it's a little bit of a um, sort of softer plastic than the actual body itself and um yeah it, it does the job you can purge it a little bit or you can purge it a lot um similar in size to the purge button on the scuba pro it's just a little bit wider instead of um uh, sort of deeper um, as far as sort of overall size, the S620 is a little bit smaller by the looks of it. So um, actually square real estate sort of in front of your mouth, S620 is a little bit smaller, XX200 is a little bit bigger. Same uh, sort of adjustments, except on the XX200, we have a metal uh, sort of adjustment knob and um, that's crenellated, so very easy to use with gloves. Um, and that's a nice sort of smooth movement. Again, we've got a, a Venturi lever, just as easy as it is on the, um, uh, on the Scuba Pro, if easier, I might say, because on the, uh, on the SX20, this kind of pivots and uh, sort of turns on that axis, whereas this is more of a lever, so you get a bit more purchase on it. Um, so that might be a selling point, especially if you're wearing gloves. Um, the mouthpiece on this, this is their Comfort Bike mouthpiece. So you get this little bridge over the top. Some people aren't a huge fan of that. I don't mind it myself. Uh, I actually prefer it because it just holds the mouthpiece in the mouth uh, without having to bite down on it. And um, everything in the second stage has a special antibacterial, antimicrobial sort of coating on it. So actually it's going to protect you by sort of preventing stuff from growing on the inside. Um, especially if you don't sort of wash it out quite as thoroughly. Uh, big, big heat sinks uh, sort of moving across here, but you do have traditional nuts, so you can um, sort of get it off with a regular spanner. A couple of things uh, that uh, the, uh, the S620 uh, doesn't do is this is ambidextrous. So you can change the hose routing depending on where you want the hose, if you want to come it from the, uh, from the left hand side. Um, and also you'll notice this has a blank section uh, on that nut. And um, that's basically so that you can fit a cable tie and then a small bolt snap so you can clip off your um, that second stage. It's a little bit close to the body for my liking. I tend to like it kind of there on the hose, uh, but if you don't mind it uh, sort of that close to the, uh, the body of the second stage, then perfect. Braided hose on this. <coughs> now this isn't a MyFlex hose, this is just a braided hose. Um, 
just as light and, um, and sort of flexible. And because it's so short, you're not gonna get the problem of it sort of floating up. Um, it's usually the longer sort of one and a half, 2.1 meter hoses that you get the kind of float in. If it's just like 75, 90 centimeters like this hose, um, then you're not really gonna uh, notice that. But it does make it a little bit lighter, shaves off a few grams uh, if you're traveling, and um, it, it's just that a bit more um, flexible. Moving to the first stage. So the first stage is a big chunk. So this is um, sort of noticeably heavy, um, especially compared to the, uh, the Mark 25. Now in cold water, you kind of want a bit of weight. The bigger, the chunkier, the um, sort of bit of metal first stage, the bigger, um, sort of better heat sink it is. Um, it's only got four low pressure ports and these come in sort of fixed so they don't rotate. So that's the selling point on the um, sort of Mark 25. Um, they're slightly, ever so slightly angled upwards. Uh, you could invert it if you really wanted to. Um, and you do have two high pressure ports. Uh, so exactly the same if you've got a, uh, an SPG and a transmitter, it's perfect. Now this one is environmentally sealed, so we can see our seal right in there. So that's preventing anything from getting inside uh, and just means that, yeah, it, you don't have to wash it quite as thoroughly uh, because stuff's not getting on the inside. The, uh, the DIN wheel itself, this has got uh, some nice detailing around it, means that you get a decent uh, sort of purchase. Uh, more purchase when you're undoing it instead of doing it up. Remember, you don't have to tighten it up too much when you put it into the cylinder. The pressure's gonna do most of the work for you. So as an overall, uh, as far as aesthetics as sort of good looking, I'd probably give it to the, um, the Scuba Pro, um, but kind of features wise, it's kind of spread across the two. I, I kind of like, the ambidextrous kind of nature of the uh, of the XX200. I prefer the features on the uh, the Mark 25. Um, the hose of this, it, it will be kind of a mix mash of the two. So they're kind of le level pegging as uh, at this point. Okay guys, so now we're gonna take a look at the specs. So first of all, I hooked them both up to a handy cylinder just to give them a quick breathe, just to see what they feel like. Uh, the Scuba Pro had quite a nice smooth breathe to it, nice and comfortable. Uh, no matter how you adjust the um, sort of the, the, the breathing adjustments, it was nice smooth, it delivered gas, not too much. It wasn't sort of forcing it down you. Uh, the XX200, a little bit ropey. It's still a decent breathe, but you can kind of feel it fluttering a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna give the edge to the STX, uh, sorry, the S620, um, as far as the breathing. Other than that, specs sort of going through the stuff that I've already spoken about. You've got four low pressure ports versus five low pressure ports. You've got swivel turret on the uh, Mark 25, but you don't on the uh, on the FSR. Uh, they both have breathing adjustment. They both have uh, Venturi levers um, that interrupt free flows. Um, so fairly similar. The, the the Mark 25 has some slightly better sort of specs on it with that fifth low pressure port and that swiveling turret. Uh, as far as weight, so the S620 with the Mark 25 weighs in at about 960 grams, so just underneath the one kilo, uh, whereas the XTX200 with the big FSR, that comes in at just over one kilogram at, uh, uh, I think it was about 120 uh, grams over one kilogram. Service schedule, so this is a big point. Um, so with the XTX200, you have to have these serviced every 12 months, every single year, or every 100 dives, depending on which comes first, just like your car. Scuba Pro is every two years or, or every 100 dives. So if you're not doing like 100 dives a year plus, um, then it's gonna save yourself some money in the long run because you only have to get these serviced every other year. So that's definitely a, a plus sort of going forwards as you're owning these regulators. Uh, the first stage on the Mark 25, so this is air balanced. Um, they don't mention um, any kind of overbalancing uh, Scuba Pro, whereas the FSR is overbalanced. So a balanced regulator will deliver a constant le uh, level of gas no matter how deep you go. An overbalanced can deliver more the deeper you go. So it can deliver more gas the deeper down you are, and that's particularly useful in the unlikely event of a out of air emergency. If your buddy runs out of 
air, it can deliver plenty of gas to both of you because chances are you're not gonna be sort of chilled out and relaxed. You're gonna need as much gas. So this first stage can deliver plenty of gas at deeper depths. Then we're going on to airflow. So I couldn't find uh, the exact specs, uh, sort of matching specs on both of those. So unfortunately, I'm just gonna give you the specs that I could find. So airflow from the, uh, the Mark 25. So that was at least 8,500 liters per minute. So this can deliver plenty of gas. They actually use this in some submersibles um, as, a, uh, as a first stage adjusting pressure because it's, it can just deliver plenty of gas. Second stage is the, uh, the S620 drops it down to 1850 liters per minute, so it can deliver plenty of gas. So if you're all um, sort of in and out of air emergency, yeah, you can really huff and puff through this and it'll give you plenty of gas. Work of breathing, with, <coughs> pardon me, which is done on a Ansley test machine, so couldn't find the ANSTE results on the uh, Mark 25 uh, S620. They'll be out there somewhere. I just don't know if um, Scuba Pro's published them. I'll see if I can dig them up later. Um, we do have the ANSTE results for the XTX 200. Uh, so that was 0.7 joules per liter. So quite a low sort of work of breathing, nice and uh, sort of comfortable. Um, and then it's really down to price. So the overall recommended retail price, not the current web price, because that fluctuates. Um, um, the current recommended retail price here in the UK for the Apex XTX 200 uh, is £568 uh, versus the Scuba Pro 629 So it's more expensive for the uh, Scuba Pro, but <coughs> bear in mind that you have that two-year service schedule. So that's going to cost you at least £60 a year um, getting your um, sort of regulated service. If you can sort of half that, then it works out £30 a year. So after a while, they're going to start paying that difference. So um, yeah, it can sort of make that difference. It's worth buying a little bit more expensive uh, if you're getting sort of better specs and in the long run, they're going to work out cheaper. Okay guys, so to summarize it all, kind of bring it all down into sort of one big old decision, um, the, the main one for me in particular is how it actually feels on a cylinder breathing from it. And I'm gonna give the edge to the S620. Uh, it had a smoother breathe, it was a bit more natural, it's a bit quieter as well. Um, as far as specs, quite similar, I prefer a lot of the features on the S620 with the Mark 25, um, probably the Mark 25 in particular, um, because it has that swivel turret, uh, because it has that fifth low pressure port, just makes it a little bit more practical, whether you're using singles, twins, or side mount, um, you've got a bit more flexibility. If I could sort of chop and change, I'd take the environmental ceiling from the FSR uh, and sort of mix it into that. Uh, I'd probably take the braided hose from the um, from the XTX 200 as well, um, swap out that rubber hose. Um, and as far as second stages, yeah, the SX20, I think it looks a little bit better. It, it, that's more personal preference um, with, with aesthetics. As far as performance wise, yeah, I like the, um, the overall performance of the SX20. I'd kind of prefer the, the flexibility and the sort of robustness of the XTX 200s. Um, I know on the inside, these are really easy to sort of adjust and fix. Um, on the Scuba Pro, yeah, you can adjust them, but you really need to know what you're doing inside of there. Um, overall, I'm gonna give it to the Scuba Pro. It's if I was given a choice between these two at their full RRP, I'd still go for the more expensive one, uh, especially hooking it up to a cylinder. You can feel the difference. It's a nice, smooth breathe. Um, yes, it's got a rubber hose, but you can swap that out. Yes, the um, sort of first stage isn't environmentally sealed, but it kind of is at the same time. It's cold water rated. It's lighter as well. So for a lot of our scuba diving, we're traveling a lot nowadays. You don't want a big chunk of metal sort of traveling. So if you can get a first stage that is cold water rated, it does everything um, that it does in warm water as well as in cold water, then yeah, I'm probably gonna lean in this direction. But of course, let us know which one you would choose. We'll try and put a poll in the comments. And of course, if you want us to compare two specific regulators, let us know um, so that we can sort of compare them in another video or 
anything else. Uh, if you want us to compare fins or different dive computers or masks, whatever you want us to compare, let us know in the comments and we'll put it on the list to do. Um, obviously as well, let us know what regulator you use in the comments and why, um, just to help people sort of, if they're looking to buy a set of regulators, why you bought the set of regulators you bought. Thanks for watching and safe diving. We are an online dive store serving the UK and the world for all your diving equipment needs. So why not visit us at simplyscuba.com or click the box on your screen.